Hello. Just want to share this uh, idea I've had here. It's uh, basically an emergency ventilator that I've knocked together. There's a, a massive outcry at the moment in the world for um, medical ventilators. And the UK government has actually asked for um, any manufacturers, advanced manufacturers in the UK to actually convert their manufacturing processes to making medical ventilators. So I think they're in you know, dire need for, for ventilators. Um, let's hope the situation doesn't get so bad that we get to the point that we'd need anything like this. But I, I quickly knocked together a, a ventilator that I would hope would assist or help anyone having breathing situation or you know breathing difficulties. So I'll just talk you through that and then I'll follow up with how I actually went about making it. So what I've got here is a Dyson bladeless fan. It's actually one of the um, the air filtration unit so it's not a hot or cold blower it's just a cold blower or blows fresh air that's been filtered. In the bottom is a large filtration unit um, I believe it's a HEPA filter so the HEPA filter should filter out very fine particles um, and I do believe I can't guarantee this scientifically but it should be able to filter out some virus if not all virus I, I, it, I don't think anything can really filter out all viruses but it should have a good clean air system so it sucks air in the bottom the bladeless fan is underneath this black bag here the black bag has been taped to the top of here so that we can actually suck air in the bottom blow air into this top sack now even when the unit switched off it is blowing a small amount of air past the compressor in the bottom so this is actually under positive pressure I'll squeeze it you'll see it deflates and uh, slowly reinflates so even when the unit is kind of turned off but plugged in it's still blowing air out through it then what I've done is cut a hole in the bag and taped in this pipe a bit of pipe from a washing machine and that comes down to one of these 3M respirator masks so this is your common kind of respirator that normally has two cartridges it has these kind of activated carbon cartridges or whatever cartridges you buy for it taken the cartridges off we've got one port blocked up the other port I've built an adapter to go to this pipe that's into the bag and then on the exhaling port down here or the output port I've actually built another adapter that goes from the unusual hole which is this size to a piece like that there's a hole in there to restrict the airflow that increases the pressure behind the mask now I've done some testing I've actually found that this blower and compressor sealed up like this can blow around about 0.5 psi. I can't confirm, but I've had a couple of people I've spoke to have suggested that anywhere between 0.4 and 0.5 psi is kind of what a medical ventilator should be able to blow at. Lots of different types of medical ventilators out there. Uh, some push air into the lungs and then let it go in under a lower pressure. Um, some actually are assistive so they kind of detect when you breathe in and apply pressure to push air into the lungs more this one doesn't have any sensors it's kind of a passive device and all it does is whoever's wearing it will be receiving a higher pressure than ambient air so slightly compressed air into the mask when they inhale that will help them inflate their lungs um, but then when they exhale they will have to exhale against that higher pressure so I don't know the science behind it and whether that's going to be helpful but I think the problem people are having is just getting enough oxygen into their blood supply so hopefully increasing the pressure they're breathing in is compressing more gas into that same volume and should help increase their ability to inhale uh, or get their blood oxygen level up. So I'm just going to turn this on, give it a test. This is kind of in prototype stage that needs kind of bonding in there. If we turn this on, we'll see the bag inflate. There it is. Um, it's now blowing. We can uh, turn the fan up. I found eight is about right. If we go up to nine or ten, we're actually blowing too much air. And now coming into the mask is our high pressure air. If we can hear that flowing out from there. I'm going to try and put this on and demonstrate it. 
So to put this on, we just put this on like a normal respirator. Put it around the back of the mouth. The idea of having this exhaust pipe coming off to the side here is that you could essentially put another filter on the end of here, preferably a HEPA filter. That will make sure that any kind of viral particles that are coming out are filtered from the air supply going back into the room. Um, or I guess if you haven't got a filter, you could literally, if you had to, worst case scenario, poke that out the window and uh, just blow all those particles outside. Probably not advised, you do really want to be containing those particles, but you know, an emergency situation uh, and ends to a means. So as far as any kind of testing goes, uh, it's very, very basic. I've been using Samsung Health here. There's a sensor on the back. And when you do a stress test, you can actually measure your um, pulse rate and your blood oxygen level. So let's see if it will work. It is a bit fiddly. So there we go, I've got a pulse, which is good. It does a measurement. Takes a little while. There we go. Um, you can see I've got a pulse rate of 96, which is quite high at the moment, but my blood oxygen level is around about 100%. No idea how accurate this thing is but it does seem to work. So what we've done for testing is Kaylee, she's got asthma. What she's been doing is uh, some intensive exercise and when we measure her blood oxygen level, it drops down to about 93%. And then what I've done is kind of timed how long it takes for that to return back to 98, 99%. It takes a, a few minutes. What we found is actually when you put the ventilator on and she's worn it for testing with that low blood oxygen level, turned it on and within about you know, five or six or so breaths, she's already back up to 100%. So it does seem to, using this rudimentary equipment, have a positive impact on your blood oxygen level. So I think just the idea of blowing that compressed air in there does help. I've also worn it for some time for no particular reason. It does make me go a bit lightheaded and dizzy, which kind of suggests a, an oversaturated oxygen level. Um, probably not wise to be just wearing it for no reason at all, but no, I'm, I'm still here after about two days of testing, so quite positive or, you know, I feel confident that if I was in a situation that I needed help with breathing, I would put that on myself and um, have a go with it and see how it goes. Well, yeah, fingers crossed everyone stays well and that there's no need for anything like that. So don't know if that's helpful to anyone or whether it's recommended. I can't give you any kind of medical um, guarantee on this, but I guess it's a, a worst case scenario of emergency. If you need to get air into someone, um, perhaps this would be useful. One thing I noticed when I was last in a hospital um, visiting someone is that they actually had an abundance of these filter units. Um, in some hospitals I've been to, they actually had three or four of these per ward. So you could literally rapidly convert these to blowing some compressed air and um, they're not too noisy so some of the other ideas I had with compressors were very very noisy and use a lot of energy this is actually quite energy efficient let's hope it doesn't get to a situation that anyone needs devices like this but yeah it might be might be helpful to just talk about that so what I'll do is I'll just follow up uh, this part of the video with some little guides on how I actually went about making this it's quite simple really um yeah i wish everyone luck and the best of health keep safe